Hi, I'm Philip from Optimize Lab, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Google Ads automated rules. Now, automated rules can save you a lot of time and streamline the management of your Google Ads account, but they can also cost you a lot of money if not used correctly. So in this video, I'm going to go through what you can use automated rules for, and most importantly, how you should be using them in order to get the best performance out of your campaigns. So keep watching. So to start off with, what can you change within your account using automated rules? Well, you can change campaigns, you can change keywords, and you can change ads. Um, and you can make a selection of different changes. So if we start with campaigns, and we look at an example here, so I'm just going to highlight a campaign, I'm going to click edit, and then create automated rule. And we can see here that we have several options. So you can select the campaign to be enabled, or you can select it to be paused. You can change the budget, and there's a few different things you can do when you're changing the budget. And you can set an alert, so um, an email alert. And for each of these options, you define criteria for when this action that you're setting gets carried out. So if we take, for example, uh, enabling a campaigns, you can set the date of when that's going to happen. Uh, it can happen more than once. It can be a recurring automated rule. Um, so it could be something that happens on a weekly basis, a monthly basis. You can set it to happen once and you can define a date. Uh, you can select which campaigns you want to apply this rule to. So it can be many campaigns in your account. It could be all of them. Um, and most, most interestingly, you can set a condition. So it can be based on performance. What's happened with that campaign? Has it spent a certain amount within a particular time frame? Has it generated a certain number of clicks? Maybe a goal number of clicks that you had. Um, have the click-through click rates um, been lower than you expected and therefore you want to pause the campaign. You can be very creative here as to what conditions you set up to apply these rules. So one of the most um, common reasons to use this rule is simply to enable a campaign when that campaign is supposed to go live, if it has specific live dates and then if it has um, a specific duration when it comes to the end of that duration when it comes to that date it needs to be paused the automated rule can be used to automatically pause that campaign um, so you can be very very uh, creative with the types of rules that you set up um, and so if we move over now to keywords um, we can see that uh, you have a different set of options. So again, I'm just going to highlight a keyword and you could highlight multiple keywords um, and then you can create uh, the automated rule and we'll see the types of options that we have. So similar to campaigns, you can pause keywords, you can enable keywords and you can change the bids, which is relevant if you're using max cost per click or enhanced cost per click, uh, any bidding strategy where you're able to change the bids. And of course, you can create an alert. Um, now, when you are adjusting bids, you have the opportunity to either um, set a new bid, so you define a nominal bid that you'd like to use under those conditions, or um, you can increase bids by a particular amount, or you can decrease bids by a particular, um, by a percentage or an amount. So it could be 10 pence or 10 cents, whatever your currency is, or a percentage. So 10%, 20%, based on whether or not those keywords are meeting certain conditions or certain criteria. So maybe, um, keywords which are generating a certain amount of revenue or a certain uh, amount of clicks or a certain click-through rate, you might want to increase the bids. Um, or keywords with uh, a low quality score, you might want to um, go ahead and reduce bids for those keywords. Or perhaps uh, you, you'd want to pause those keywords, in which case you could set up an automated rule to pause those keywords. So you can be very, very creative with these automated rules. 
Now with ad copy, we're a bit more limited with the types of changes that we can make. So again, if I highlight one of the ads, or I could highlight many ads, edit, and then create automated rule, we simply have an option of either enabling ads or pausing ads or creating an email alert. So we're quite limited. We can't change ad copy. Um, we can simply just enable or pause. And what this most commonly is used for is if you have some type of promotion coming up, you have promotional ad copy that you want to run during that promotion, then you can set your current ads, the non-promotional ads, to be paused at that specific date, and you can set um, the promotional ads that you've imported into your campaign to be enabled on that date, and then they can be set to automatically revert at the end of that period. Um, now, it's important whenever you're making any types of changes, whether it's to a campaign or ads, that you always preview the possible results of the automated rule that you've created. Um, so for example, if we're gonna set a campaign to be enabled, um, we wanna check and make sure what changes are gonna be made. So um, if I set this campaign uh, to be enabled and I set the frequency as once and I set it for just the 20th of this month, um, and we're just going to give it a test name, so test rule. What you want to make sure is that you click this preview button here. You want to make sure you preview your rule and make sure that you haven't made a mistake and that you fully understand what changes are going to be made by this rule because it can, uh, automated rules can make very, very costly changes if you're not aware of what changes they're going to make. They can enable many campaigns if you accidentally um, set the rule, for example, um, uh, or if you selected here by accident all enabled and paused campaigns and you've got many campaigns in your account, um, it, it can happen that you have the unintended case where many campaigns are enabled, they spend a lot of money, it can be extremely costly in certain accounts. So you should always be very careful. Click here to preview and then um, it will tell you what changes are gonna be made. Now, it's crucial when using this to understand that it's gonna tell us what changes are gonna be made under the current settings. So because this campaign is already enabled, it's gonna tell us, oh, this rule's not gonna make any changes given these current settings because the campaign's live. Now, um, if the campaign is due to be paused at some date, um, which is prior, to the 20th, the date we set for this rule, then the rule will enable that campaign. So it will be paused at some point, this rule will automatically enable it. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. If you set up a rule, you have to remember which rules you have set up. Because if we set up this rule now, and then we pause the campaign and we think it's paused, the automated rule will enable it on the 20th. And if we don't remember that that's going to happen, then that could be an issue because that campaign could be running without us knowing, um, perhaps spending money that um, the client or we do not want to be spending. So you need to be very careful when setting up these rules. Now, um, I'll just show quickly um, what it looks like if we were selecting another campaign. So if I select this campaign, edit, create automated rule, enable campaign, and we'll select again the 20th just to keep everything consistent. Rule name, test, preview. And it's just loading the preview now. And campaign status would be changed from paused to enabled because it's using the current state, which is paused as its um, test. And it's saying that that would be changed from paused to enabled. Um, so we can see what changes could be made. Now, going back to the point of not forgetting what rules you've set up and what actions are gonna be taken out, um, one tip is to always use the email results feature because this is a backup. This is a reminder that gets sent out every time the rule runs. Um, now for rules that run on a daily basis, maybe you don't wanna set that up because you'll be getting emails on a daily basis. Um, but for very, very important rules, I would recommend selecting this and 
um, selecting every time this rule runs because it's just a safety precaution is telling you what's happening, uh, what changes will be carried out. And it reminds you to look into your account and double check all of the changes that the automated rule has made are correct. And I recommend doing that. You should always double check what changes the automated rule is making. Um, automated rules can streamline the account management, account management process, but the responsibility for managing the account is still yours. You need to keep track of what's happening within the account. So even if you've set an automated rule to run to carry out specific actions, always log into the account at that time and double check what's been done, what's been carried out by the automated rule and do that as soon as you can. Now, once you've created your automated rules, you can view these within the um, tools and settings bar. So if you navigate to the top right hand corner, click tools and settings, and then click on rules under bulk actions, you will be able to see all of the automated rules that you've created. Um, and you can double check your automated rules. You can even make edits to them. So if you decide that you want to change the dates or change the criteria, then you can do so by clicking on edit and um, you can delete your automated rules if you decide that you no longer want them to run. Okay, so lastly, I want to talk about the limitations of using automated rules. Now, one common thing that uh, advertisers want to use automated rules for is to pause campaigns after they've accrued a certain amount of spend uh, collectively. And that's something that you actually cannot do with automated rules um, or not as simply as you might think. So if we just go through the motions, click edit, create automated rule, um, pause campaigns, um, we'll just go with all enabled campaigns, condition, performance, cost and we're going to say the campaigns have spent uh one should we say uh, let's say let's go with 2000 um something like that 2000 uh apply and then um we want this automated rule to run on a daily basis using data from the same month because we want to look at the cost in that month um, and we're just going to put test here. Now, if we were to run this rule and the campaigns collectively had spent over £2,000, but individually had not, this rule would change nothing. Because this rule is going to look at each individual campaign and look at has that campaign spent over £2,000 and then decide whether or not it's going to pause that campaign. So that is one uh, not commonly understood limitation of automated rules. Um, also, automated rules cannot be used to make changes to things like your audiences or based on demographics data. So we are somewhat limited with what we can do with automated rules. They're very useful, but it's important to understand those limitations. And going back to what um, I said previously, it's important to always check your changes. I can't stress that enough. It's important to check to make sure that no costly mistakes are made when you're setting up these automated rules. Um, so I hope this video has been very informative and useful. Uh, if it has, then feel free to subscribe for additional videos to help you manage your online marketing campaigns. Um, and if you want any assistance in managing your online marketing campaigns, then feel free to get in contact with us at Optimize Lab. Um, just email contact at optimizelab.com. And thank you for watching.